All right, this is Mr. Voigt. I'm here at the planer, also called the surface planer or thickness planer. We typically just call it the planer for short. Um, this machine is used to, by the name of it, plane a board down. In other words, take a, a, reduce the thickness of a board across its face. Um, so on a board like this, you know, these are our edges, these are our ends, and our faces are these larger pieces. So boards get pushed through the, or uh, put through this on their faces. Um, always with the grain. You don't feed anything through the planer across the grain. All right. Um, so the thickness planer is that machine. So the cutter heads on this are actually above the table. The table's here, and this cutter head adjusts up and down on planers. With the jointer, it was the infeed table that went up and down to adjust the thickness of our cut. But just like the, the jointer, um, we want to be sure not to take too much off. 1 16th of an inch is the most you would take off with this. And again, it depends on the type of lumber that you're using, uh, as well as a couple other factors I'll get to here in a second. So you want to make sure that if you want a nice clean cut and you're not going to damage this, and first and foremost, to be safe, you want to make sure you take off thinner um, passes, to less material with each pass. I would say a 32nd of an inch, uh, at most a 16th of an inch with, with softer materials. Now, other factors that play into this, so the, the type of material you have, the harder the lumber, the less you want to take off. The wider, this is about a 14 inch planer, so the wider that lumber is, the more surface area you're having to plane, you want to take off a little bit less. Um, how fast you're feeding it through, uh, has something to do with how much you want to take off. Now this planer over here I'm not going to show you but there's an adjustment. There's a slow speed which I think is 16 feet per minute and a fast speed which I believe is 30 feet per minute. Um, so if you have it on the slower speed obviously that it's not having to cut as much as fast. Uh, you could maybe take a slightly larger swath or cut um, on those but Again, those are all things you have to take into account. The width of the board, the hardness of the board, and the speed at which you put it through. The slower you put something through at the same thickness of cut, the cleaner the cut's going to be. I think that's pretty much intuitive and, and understandable for most people. So the slower you go, as long as you don't change other variables, the cleaner your cut should be. Okay? So we, I believe right now, uh, we have it on the fast. We, we have it on the, you know, 30 feet per minute because 16 feet per minute is pretty slow. So unless we have something special we're planing, and like these boards, they're thin, it's softwood lumber, we could take up to a 16th, inch, 16th of an inch off of this and go through fast and it's going to come out pretty good. If we have a wide board, you, know, you get the idea, a wide board that's hardwood, hardwood lumber, we're going to want to slow it down um, and take less off each pass. Okay. So typically, you want to make sure everything is on this machine before you start using it. Right now, uh, I have uh, something wrong with our with our vacuum system, and I had to take um, our our guard off here. This typically collects dust on this back side and makes it so people can't you know put their fingers in there, and then it would attach up here. Um, we have to take really a lot of caution, or use a lot of caution. Uh, and using this at this point, we, we're going to use it very rarely. And then, of course, we got to sweep everything up because it just spits all the all the shavings out the back side. So you really want to make sure that all everything is in place before you start using this um, piece of machinery. Like all machines in here, you really don't want to stand behind uh, what you're feeding in. Like on the table saw, you're not supposed to stand right behind the blade or right behind the board you're cutting. If it kicks back, and it could hit you. Same rule applies here. Um, if you have a partner sitting on this side who's taking what's coming through, then they take that board and you do not pass it over the motor. You pass it around the side of the motor, okay? Um, so that you're not running things over the top. Now there are some planers that have a roller up here, so you can roll things back and forth. If you have one of those, obviously you can use it and pass the lumber that, that way. Um, you need to make sure that you check all the lumber you put through this planer. You don't want to put anything that has a finish on it, like paint or varnish or polyurethane. Those dull, that dulls the blades very quickly. You want to, any lumber that has a lot of dust or dirt on it, 
You want to get as much of that off as you possibly can. Obviously, we don't want nails or other pieces of metal. It chips our blades, and when we chip our blades, um, it starts leaving you know streaks in our plane job, uh, which we really don't want. Plus, those blades are you know 150 to 200 dollars to replace them. Even if I got to take them off and, and get them honed down and sharpened, you're talking fifty dollars plus my time to do it. So we really want to try not to dull these or damage them. Okay. Um, there are the cutter heads, as I said, are on top. So we lower this down a little bit each time. Uh, typically, about an eighth of an inch will get you about a thirty-second of an inch of of depth, an eighth of a turn. I mean, on, of this handle. And there are two. There's an in-feed roller and an out-feed roller, and it will take it from you after you get it started. It'll take your board from you. Your board has to be as long as. The distance between those two rollers. If it get, you know, if it's too short, it'll push it in, and it won't reach the outfeed roller to push it back out the other side. So in this particular planer, we're talking a foot for that in feed and out feed roller. Okay, it has to be at least a foot long. It has to go with the grain. You can plane down to. It depends on the planer, but you can get pretty thin. This is a five eighths inch board. We can go all the way down to like, um, I think about an eighth of an inch maybe even 3 16ths of an inch, which is pretty thin that you can send through here. Look at your owner's manual or ask me for this particular machine. Uh, you know, even the tabletop planers, they all have a thickness you don't want to go, you know, beyond. But it's pretty thin that you can get, you can get down to. So really you need to check each particular machine before you go beyond like a half an inch. Okay? Um, so watch that. One more thing you need to be aware of, uh, you really only want to feed one board through here at a time. Even if you have multiple uh, boards that you could fit side by side. So, you know, we have these, you don't want to put these through side by side. You want to put them through one after the other, okay? Uh, you just don't want to have two boards going through at the same time. So feed one board through at the same time. Uh, when you finish, just like on all the machines, to be safest, you need to stand here until this winds down and stops moving. In other words, the cutter head has stopped moving. On the table saw, you want the blade to have stopped moving. On the miter saw, the blade needs to have stopped moving. So you got to obviously turn it off before that will happen. So turn it off and wait for everything to stop. And then make sure all the guards are in place. They should be if you haven't removed them. And then you can leave the area. You just don't want somebody to come over here and start putting something in it while it's still running. Okay, and I did mention the off bear earlier, the person that's on this other side that's your partner, their job, just like it is on all the equipment, when you have a partner or an assistant helping you, or somebody we call the off bear, their only job is to hold material so that it doesn't put strain on equipment or you don't have to hold it while you're pushing something through a machine. You just want to concentrate on pushing and keeping things up next against, up against the fence. Um, you don't want to have to balance a long piece. So all they're doing is holding it and letting the operator or the machine push it through the cutter heads or the blades. So that's always the purpose of an off bearer or partner. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. So take this test as many times as it, as it requires. The only other thing I can say is, as always, you need to follow your PPE rules. I'm not going to go through all those again, but they're going to have PPE questions on this test as well. So take your test as many times as it takes to get 100% on those questions. All right, guys, thanks.